All right, everyone, it's time for some fascinating science news, actually. It turns out that bumblebees have been established to be capable of using inferential reasoning. I'm actually going to read this verbatim, or rather much of it. Critically, inferential reasoning is a type of logical reasoning that allows organisms to solve problems with incomplete information. For example, if I'm presented with two cups, and I am told under one, uh, uh, one holds a nice reward, when lifting one of them and seeing it's empty, I will be able to infer that it's the other cup that was not lifted that hides the reward. This is the first time, and I believe this particular passage is slightly inaccurate, I'll explain. Uh, the first time that this ability is shown in invertebrates, specifically in insects, and questions whether language or big brains are required for this ability. They used a number of colored strips in order to test the bumblebees, and they were capable of inferring over time uh, where, where their reward was going to come from, their nectar. I believe that this is wrong in that octopuses, or octopi, I'm not sure which is actually the proper term, had been uh, shown to be able to use inferential reasoning before. This comes in the wake of a lot of science articles that I've been reading lately, over the last couple of years. I've gotten more into science lately again. I was obsessed with it as a kid, but you know I got dragged into politics mainly. I do mainly politics and current events. But uh, I, I wanted to get back into the science news a little bit more because I find it fascinating. And so I've got several news aggregators actually that I use. Thank you to the clankers out there who supplied me with the physics news and science news because I look at them every day. And uh, uh, we've, we've seen a slurry of articles showing that our understanding of the cognition of other life forms has been rather deficient. Our cognition about their cognition was deficient uh, for a very long time. A hundred years ago, the human species tended to regard most animals as being nothing more than dumb automatons crafted specifically for our pleasure, you know, like the Adam and Eve sort of thing. Uh, they were put, put on the earth effectively just to be exploited and enjoyed, and anything shy of uh, some of the, uh, the, the ape species was considered to be very dumb, and then, and then we reckoned them as being like proto-hominids, basically. And then dogs, they can learn tricks and cats and things like that, but it was, just, it was just intriguing. It wasn't really any sign of a greater cognition. It's just that you're capable of training this particular animal. We're now knowing, we now know that corvids, that is crows, rooks, uh, magpies, and ravens, are capable of enjoyment for enjoyment's sake. They're capable of recreation. Um, although any reasonable person looking at them wallowing around in the snow and calling happily knew that a long time ago. Uh, they just had to quantify it for scientific purposes. We know that they're capable of uh, communicating about things at a distance. That's the only uh, species other than ants, bees, and termites that are capable of doing that. And again, now we're finding that bumblebees are capable of logical inference, um, w which shows that it's not just a, a, a uh, micro-evolved sort of colonial thing, that there's an actual intelligence there within that individual member of that species. And we're finding that our uh, understanding of cognition was totally wrong. And uh, as an animal lover, especially a cat lover, I've often thought they're much more intelligent than they're given credence for. Um, more scientific studies will be needed, but I, I strongly suspect that our furry little friends there actually have basically taken over the world and that we're, we're sort of a slave species. Our only purpose is to feed the cat, basically. Any cat owner knows this is probably the case. Apparently, we're also here to grow flowers for the bumblebees, so maybe, this, maybe it's true what Lovecraft said. The confused hand of some malevolent deity sent down uh, demons from outer space and began populating the planet. Only they weren't hor horrific or anything like that. They, they made them fuzzy on purpose so that we would want to pet them. Or they made them interesting like an octopus or, you know, helpful like a bee. And so <laughs> now we've got our little partners in crime, so to speak, as a species. By the way, bumblebees are just generally cool. If this were about honeybees, I wouldn't even cover the article. I just really like bumblebees. They make cute sounds and literally bumble around and I find them adorable. Uh, any gardener likes them too. Sometimes you accidentally dig them out of the ground and you're like, oh shit, and then you have to you know, cover them back up and hope that they survive. The fact that an insect with a brain that's smaller than a pea, it's like literally the size of a peppercorn, I think, is capable of using that kind of inferential logic shows that our understanding of cognition is fundamentally flawed on every level. 
uh, because it shouldn't be a thing. Uh, an insect should not be capable of that sort of inferential reasoning. Now, should they? A cat? Maybe. An octopus? Okay. Octopi are pretty friggin' cool as well, and, you know, and they're also very tasty, which is unfortunate for them. Dogs and chimpanzees and uh, orangutans and things like that. They're capable of learning that very quickly. Um, around the time that Coco the gorilla managed to figure out how to gesturally communicate complex reasoning and talk about past events and things at a distance and stuff like that, we probably should have reevaluated our understanding of, of the brain. And this has wider implications, by the way, for the human race as well, because uh, we don't understand our own brains very well either. Oh, we understand the basic uh, concept of the brain, the cerebral cortex and the brain stem and things of that nature, the cerebellum and, and so forth, uh, you know, and, and the nerves. We, we understand the basic uh, biochemistry behind them. But we don't really understand that much about human cognition when you really think about it. And we're only beginning to scratch the surface of the cognition of these little guys. And look, she comes up here quite clearly. I mean, who's in control? Uh, who's sitting on whose lap? They evolved specifically to be smart and funny and cute and stuff like that. And bumblebees followed much the same trajectory. It's almost like animals with an advanced cognition were, they sort of evolved with human beings, uh, both naturally and artificially, uh, to be like companions and stuff. Because crows are fun to watch. Kitty cats are nice and warm, and then they wake you up at 2 a.m. sometimes, you know, farting in your face, but uh, they're still adorable. You look at that squishy face. You're smarter than a bumblebee. Don't worry. Just the picture of happiness. I couldn't uh, help it. But uh, bumblebees using logic, my goodness. Are we going to find out that ants are capable of the same thing? Because it's entirely possible. Apparently the brain size doesn't even correlate to the intelligence in that sense. So I'd be surprised if other colonial insects weren't capable of the same feat. It would be interesting uh, to test them. Uh, termites as well. Now, I like ants better than termites, you know, for various reasons. Number one, they smell better. <laughs> Usually, it depends on the breed of ant. Uh, I was obsessed with those as a kid, too. I find this fascinating, though. We found that an insect species that shouldn't really show any major cognition at all is capable of inferring A and B, effectively. It may not sound impressive, but for, some, for a life form with a brain that size, yeah, it's pretty impressive. That's about all. Peace out.